So two announcements that just came out this week not only confirm that Ripple XRP is headed to zero, but the these same two announcements also suggest that the US dollar will be the world's global reserve currency for much longer than most people think, okay? So as unlikely as it sounds that these two topics and two announcements could be related, they are, and we're going to start explaining all of this by having a look at this announcement from Ripple themselves, okay? So the Ripple XRP ledger is launching a stable coin pegged to the US dollar. Now, we're not going to cover this one first. The first headline I actually want to cover is what Vanek is doing. Okay, so Vanek is once again launching a US dollar stable coin after getting $12 million of VC backing. Okay, so this is very, very interesting. Because Vanek obviously has a Bitcoin ETF. Then before we get there and having a look at why this is significant, let's have a look at what this announcement uh, is talking about. Uh, so uh, Vanek is launching a US dollar stablecoin after closing a $12 million funding round. The name of the stablecoin is Agora digital dollar, and it's going to be called AUSD. Kind of sounds a little bit like an Australian stablecoin dollar, AUSD, uh, but it's not. It's uh, Agora US dollar stablecoin. And most interestingly, it's going to be fully backed by US treasury bills and overnight uh, repo agreements. While $90 billion asset manager firm Vanek uh, is the CEO and he will manage the fund for Agora's reserves. Okay. So this is very interesting because this is the yet another signpost that big companies are getting interested in creating their own US dollar stable coins. Okay. This is absolutely fascinating because of course, Vanek is in the Bitcoin ETF race. They have, uh, their ETF ticker is called HODL. And they right now have, uh, what is that, $600 million of assets in their Bitcoin ETF. So this is massive. And they're obviously, I, I think the timing is actually very interesting about this US dollar stablecoin announcement. Uh, so the ETF has been live for 90 days. Vanek has 8,000 Bitcoin in their ETF. When I find my favorite little video, the ETF tickers, we can see Vanek is about in fifth or sixth place. They have that ticker HODL and they're one of the main leaders in this Bitcoin ETF race. They're number five. Are uh, they number, yeah, number five in the race. Okay. So the fact that they're now launching a US dollar stable coin is to me, I think it's very interesting because there's multiple different stories going on here. We have obviously uh, BlackRock coming out recently and putting $100 million of capital into their new US dollar stable coin that's going to be riding on top of the Ethereum network. We also, uh, and now we have Ripple, which is the next piece of news I want to cover for you guys, also launching their own uh stable coin. Okay. So again, this is the article it's from bin bits. Never heard of that website personally. Uh, but we can see here ripple is set to launch a stable coin pegged to the U S dollar. Okay. Now, again, this is legitimate. It is a real post as you can see from this tab here. Uh, this is the official ripple Twitter account. And as you, we can see, they're talking about actually launching a stablecoin. So the stablecoin market is booming around $150 billion today and projected to soar past $2.8 trillion by 2028. Okay, this is the significant part. This is the interesting part of the story. If you have $2.8 trillion of stablecoins, well, what happens if stablecoins continue to be 100% backed by US government debt. This is the perfect unwinding of the petrodollar system for America. America is incentivized to allow Bitcoin and stablecoins to do what they want to do. Because obviously, as 
stable coins proliferate, so does the demand for US government debt. And this comes at the exact same time that you're watching all of the BRICS countries de-dollarize, and it comes at the exact same time that everybody is trying to get away from US dollars um, from putting them in their reserves. So the US has $34 trillion of debt that it needs to find a buyer for. And it would be interesting to see whether we would have $2.8 trillion of demand for stable coins by 2028. But this is what Ripple said. And they said, look, considering this demand, we are going to actually be launching our own stable coin on the XRP ledger. And it's going to be one to one uh, with the US dollar. And we can see it's going to be holding uh, US government bonds and cash equivalents. And Ripple pledges transparency with monthly third party attestations. This is the same attestations that Tether is using uh, for its treasury reserves. Okay, now speaking of Tether, I want to actually play this clip from uh, Cantor Fitzgerald's CEO. Uh, his name is Lutnick, Howard Lutnick, the CEO of Cantor Fitzgerald, one of the largest financial services companies in the world. And if you guys didn't know, this is actually an interview that came a little bit earlier in the year at the World Economic Forum Davos meeting. And he's just kind of having an average interview. And uh, the uh, Lutnick, the uh, CEO of Cantor Fitzgerald, just says, look, I want to start talking about Bitcoin and crypto. Let me talk about it. And I think it's interesting to see what he says. So I'm going to play this video for anyone who might have missed it. The banks are going to do really, really well. So you can see financial services are going to do really, really well. And we should talk a little bit about crypto, too, before we finish. Oh, well, let's squeeze it in. What would you like to say? So remember when gold ETF started? They were very exciting in 04. And it kind of stayed steady. There was all this hype that everyone's going to buy gold. And oh, come on. So I think Bitcoin ran up. It's kind of going to stay steady. But when the halving comes, it's going to start to rally and grow. So Bitcoin, I think, will grow. And there's a company that I like called Tether. It's a, it's a stable coin. And, you know, I manage uh, many, many of their assets. And the Tether Holdings is the name of the group. And the group, I want to say it here with you, from what we've seen, and we did a lot of work, they have the money they say they have. In the last attestation, they said they had 86 billion of assets and 83 billion of liabilities. And I've seen a whole lot, and the firm has seen a whole lot, and they have the money. And so there's always been a lot of talk. Do they have it or not? So I'm with you guys saying uh, we've On seen the it and they have it. So spot Bitcoin ETF, do you think that's going to restore confidence to the whole sector given what so this is interesting because obviously there has been lots of speculation for a long time that Tether doesn't own the assets that they have. Uh, there's like $80 billion of US treasuries uh, that Tether is supposed to have. But I think it's interesting that uh, the CEO of a company that manages a lot of their reserves says they have the assets, okay? Okay. So I think the kind of trend that we're seeing is a lot of companies are now moving into creating these US dollar stable coins. And I think all of it is good for uh, obviously the US. For Well, it's not good for a company who for so long pitched themselves as being the stable coin for the world. Okay. When I got into Bitcoin in 2017, I bought Ripple. I bought a lot of crypto trash because I didn't understand what was going on. Obviously, in 2017, the Bitcoin Lightning Network, it, I don't even know if it was in beta. I don't think it was even available in 2017. Someone fact-checked me on that, but I believe it was in beta somewhere around 2017 or 18. So the narrative at the time was, okay, uh, Bitcoin can't scale to the world, so we're going to use currencies like Litecoin and Ripple XRP as the kind of, you know, silver to Bitcoin's gold, so to say. And we're going to use those for small transactions. And this is what Ripple said for so many years. They said, look, we have this super fast ledger. We have, you know, instant transactions, instant settlements. We are going to be the cheaper crypto token that is used for day-to-day -day payments. And Bitcoin is just going to be the boring pet rock. It's going to be digital gold. But 
I think Ripple coming out and saying that, look, we're going to be creating a US dollar stable coin. This is the signal. This is the admittal of defeat, okay? This is Ripple admitting, hey, look, you know, we've lost. Uh, we have once again, you know, pivoted. Sorry, I'm choking on my lollies. I uh, ate some lollies when that video was playing. I'm a little bit sleepy at the moment. Uh, but Ripple was always saying, look, we are going to be the medium of exchange for the world. But now they're kind of saying, look, we were wrong. We're going to pivot once again. We're going to change our narrative and we're going to create a US dollar stable coin, which is fascinating, okay? This is showing you the signal. And I think this chart here is also showing you the signal. Jack Black uh, is also sharing some signal in the chat. There is no second best. And Den Lass, who has now updated his profile picture so I can see who he is uh, for the first time in a long time. Everything goes to zero against Bitcoin. That's what Max Kaiser says. Um, and it's amazing to meet um, a lot of you guys who tune in here on the channel. I met a ton of you guys at the halving party here in El Salvador. So if you're in El Salvador right now, come say hello. I'd love to chew your ear off and talk about Bitcoin. I've met uh, an amazing uh, few of you guys uh, who tune in. So uh, let's have a look at this chart. This is XRP Bitcoin. And you can see pretty clearly that I think most people have kind of known that Ripple's been dead for a long time. I mean, especially over the last year, look at the price action since 2023, just pretty much straight down. So I, I think there's been lots of people who have kind of known that Ripple failed and its narrative was dead. We can see that Ripple right now today down 97% against Bitcoin since 2017. And I think like, even if you look at the uh, XRP bag, bag holders, I want to see if they're even out, uh, defeating inflation. Okay. I don't think they are. Okay. So when you look at it, Ripple kind of has been a stable coin for the past five years. Okay. It was, um, so it's never reclaimed this $3 high in 2017. Geez, that's embarrassing. That's a very, very poor performance. Um, and we can see right now it's 60 cents, uh, which is incredible. So even against the US dollar shitcoin, Ripple's down 82% since its 2017 all-time high. Okay. So I think it's been clear for a long time that Ripple failed. That narrative failed. That narrative was dead. And the US dollar stable coin uh, was going to be the narrative. Okay. Now, speaking of narratives that are failing and speaking of narratives that are dead, you guys will know here on the channel, we talk a little bit about the uh, what do we talk about? We talk about the bear market maximalists coming to life and how I think you guys need to be careful that at this stage of the bull market, you're going to get lots of gurus and lots of people with very large followings start to try to entice you to make a little bit of extra money and say, hey, look, that Bitcoin's pretty great. It's got a compounded annual growth rate of 150% per year. But why don't you get some yield on that Bitcoin? Bitcoin's boring. Why don't you try to jazz up what you're doing? And I think I saw this video yesterday from Rao Paul and I posted it and it got a little bit of traction. So I think a lot of people are interested. Um, so I wanted to play the first 20 or 30 seconds of this video because I think it's very important to remember who was promoting what in 2021. And I titled this tweet, this is the greatest video of all time. I did not make this, by the way. Somebody else made this. Um, I would love to know who it was so I could give them credit. Uh, so again, f credit where credit is due. It was not me. But I said, never forget who shielded these tokens in 2021. Terra Luna, Celsius, and BlockFi. So I'm going to play just a little bit of this video for anyone who might have missed it. And I'd encourage you to go watch the whole video because it is hilarious. It's really funny. And I'm going to have a mix of protocols like... Cardano. <laughs> Polkadot for interoperability. I gotta choose some DeFi stuff. Choose some DeFi, choose some DeFi, choose some DeFi, choose some DeFi stuff. Stuff like Terra Network, you can just 
put money to stake the network at 20%. And they're basically risk free. You can just put money to stake the network at 20%, get 20%, get 20%, get 20%, get 20%, get 20%, 20%. Basically risk free, basically risk free, basically risk free. And everyone tells me I shouldn't do it, so I'm going to do it, which I told you before is a feature of mine. That's the bull market. You shouldn't own Bitcoin because it's going to underperform. And in a bear market, you should own stable coins. So in which case, why should you ever own Bitcoin? What's happening with UST price? And Raul, I don't know if you want to pull up a chart too. It's uh, not looking pretty. I just I just interviewed Doe this morning, by the way. Raul, you, when you hopped into this uh, recording room, UST price was at 98 cents being defended. Uh, do you know what it is right now? It's at 92 cents. Yeah. And in the bear market, you should own stable coins. Yeah, so that's a billion dollars of stable coin market. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to play the whole video, but guys, go and watch it. It is absolutely hilarious. I loved it. And again, this is a reminder. Do not forget who should you trash last cycle. Why should you listen to someone who should you absolute garbage? Okay. Now, a lot of people commented on this. Naturally, there's Rao defenders out there. And I'm playing this because somebody mentioned Rao in a recent live stream this week. And they said, oh, Rao's all right. He's just talking about Bitcoin stuff. He seems to be good. He seems to be helping the boomers. And I just think it's important to remember who scammed you last bear market or last bull market. Okay. Uh, because they're going to scam you again in future bull markets and they're going to continue to scam new people entering the Bitcoin space if we don't call them out and if we don't, and if we forget, okay, I am personally never, ever, ever going to forget what the Australian government did to me in 2020. And I will continue reminding people on a daily basis. I'll continue. I'll, I will die on that hill. Okay. I think we should do the same with crypto scammers. Okay. Uh, we can see here, Austin says, I don't listen to any YouTuber that mentions crypto. That's a great filter. If somebody even mentions the word crypto in a positive light, run for the hills. They do not know what they're talking about, okay? All of crypto is a recreation of fiat. It is taking the problem that fiat is, the analog fiat, and it is putting it on a digital ledger, okay? It's just essentially recreating fiat, okay? Uh, McLovin says, basically risk-free. I had two Bitcoin on BlockFi, but lucky I got it off. Uh, well done, Austin, on getting that Bitcoin off. Uh, Cause it says that the narrative on shitcoins is actually that they are more funny versions of casinos because there is obviously no social effect in them. And yes, I agree. You can have some fun, but eventually it will cost. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. Eventually it will cost you. Um, be very careful with what you're doing. And if you're gambling, just know that you're gambling. Don't promote it as innovation or, you know, anything like that. Uh, now, I'm going to try to keep today's live stream brief because Dan Lass has to be up in six to seven hours time. I, I made sure I was on time for this live stream. Well, kind of on time. I pushed it back a few times. Uh, but I tried to get this thing going early. So uh, I know a few of you guys, it's a little bit late where you are right now. Um, and guys, I think... The last thing I want to show you is if you're interested more about how these stable coins being backed by US dollars can help prolong the US petrodollar system. Uh, I wrote this article in 2022 on Bitcoin Magazine, and I kind of coined the term the Bitcoin milkshake thesis. So that is why I'm so fascinated by US dollar stable coins, because I think that they are actually going to help the US Federal Reserve unwind the and it might help the US government extend the dollar system. Uh, if you do want to learn more about that, I did a more in-depth video on this topic a few months ago now, two months ago now. You can see it here. It's titled The US Plan for Bitcoin and Teva Exposed at Davos. So if you want to learn more about that, you could check that video out. Uh, but with all that said, guys, I have to bounce. I have to drive out to, uh, I have to drive all the way out to Berlin here in El Salvador for the first time. I've never been. So that is that video I was talking about. And here is the article I was uh, talking about published in Bitcoin Magazine for those who want to read more. 
Um, but I have to bounce. I'm sick. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm extra slow today. I'm struggling to pronounce anything. Um, I've been super sick all week, so I apologize about that. I'm sure I'll be sharper next week for you guys. Um, and I'm going to run. So thank you so much to everyone who tuned in. Um, it's always it's always a blast. Uh, it's always a blast tuning in and getting a giggle out of the live stream. Dale says, should I convert 32 ETH to BTC? It's 19 ETH for one BTC. Of course you should, Dale. Uh, you, you should definitely convert your uh, uh, BTC. BTC. Uh, you, sh- you, sh- you should convert your ETH to BTC. Um, I'm going to call Pam and uh, tell her that McLovin says I need a blanket. I need a power nap. All right, guys, I'm going to bounce. Have a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you all in the next live stream. Thanks for tuning in.